Hello, everyone. Good, good evening here in Japan. Good morning uh, to everyone back home in Canada. My name is Tom Hall. I am Team Canada's press chief. And on behalf of the Canadian Olympic Committee, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our first press conference of the 2020 Olympic Games. This morning, we're going to be announcing uh, Team Canada's opening ceremony flag bearers. And just to note, I am here in the main press center in uh, in Japan, in our offices, which is why I've got a mask on. It's a public space. Um, donc, je m'appelle Tom Hall, je suis chef de presse pour l'équipe Canada et il me fait plaisir de vous accueillir uh, de la part de l'équipe olympique canadienne. Um, before I begin, I'd just like to acknowledge that our offices back home are on the traditional uh, treaty and unceded territories that are part of Turtle Island. This land has been home to generations of Indigenous peoples, many of whom still call this land home today. We recognize that this is colonized land and that we have a responsibility to honor and recognize its first peoples. We recognize that part of our journey is taking an active role in learning about Indigenous histories on these lands and to understand the role we can take in reconciliation as we move forward. As part of our commitment to truth and reconciliation, in particular uh, recommendations 87 to 91, which deal with sport, uh, the COC is committed to acknowledging the mistakes of the past and helping ensure that sport, uh, which we know is a powerful force for positive change, is, accept is accessible to all. Um, also, I just saw this evening that CBC will be streaming uh, the opening ceremonies that we're talking about uh, right now um, in eight Indigenous languages. So kudos to CBC for that. And thank you um, to the CBC for helping us host tonight. Um, donc, chacun de nos invités livrant une courte allocution et, uh, et puis nous prendrons le temps pour vos questions. Um, following the short formal remarks, we will open uh, the floor up for a Q&A. We will ask that you use the chat feature or raise your hand. Um, if anyone has any questions, of course, uh, for how things will work, <laughs> same format, uh, chat or raise your hand, please. Note that Eric Miles, uh, the Chief Sport Officer for Team Canada, sends his regrets. Um, he had to prioritize preparing uh, a large influx of athletes uh, this evening and throughout uh, tomorrow. Um, but joining us today are the Chef de Mission d'Equipe Canada, Team Canada Chef de Mission, three-time Olympic champion Marnie McBean, and of course, uh, les porte trapeau d'Equipe Canada 2020, Team Canada's opening ceremony flag bearers, whom you will meet very soon. But first, a brief recorded message from Canada's Prime Minister, écoutons ce court message de Prime Minister to Canada. Hello everyone, bonjour à tous. Tokyo 2020, now just a few days away, will be unlike any Olympic Games that have come before. Nous nous attendons à une célébration sportive à Tokyo qui ne ressemblera pas à celle du passé, mais qui nous inspirera tout de même. These Games will be a celebration not only of the accomplishments of our athletes, but of the collective resilience and focus it has taken all of us to navigate the challenges of the pandemic. My friends, we know sport builds communities and contributes to keeping us healthy, and these Olympic Games will serve to remind us of the power that sport can have in our lives. Comme tous les Canadiens et Canadiennes, je ressens une énorme fierté quand je vois nos athlètes représenter notre pays, et comme vous, j'ai hâte de voir l'équipe Canada en action au cours des prochains jours. Seeing the Maple Leaf flag and the Canadian delegation during the opening and closing ceremonies always gives me goosebumps and fills me with pride. That's why I'm thrilled to announce that the Tokyo 2020 opening ceremony flag bearers are Miranda Ayam and Nathan Hirayama. Miranda and Nathan are leaders on their respective women's basketball and men's rugby teams. They embody the resilience, perseverance, and excellence of Team Canada. Bravo, Miranda and Nathan. Je vous souhaite à vous et à toute l'équipe Canada tout le succès à Tokyo. Best of luck in Tokyo. We'll all be cheering you on. Thank you uh, to the Prime Minister for joining us in that celebration and preparing that video for us. Um, Okay, débutons maintenant avec le chef de mission, three-time Olympic champion, Marnie McBean. 
Merci, Tom. Je suis très fier d'être ici pour cette annonce. Like, how exciting is this? Oh, my God, we're getting going. You know, at four years, an average Olympic campaign is arduous. At five years, it's Herculean. Later on, the restrictions of a pandemic, and this campaign would have been impossible without the support of a strong and united team. 16 months ago, when Canadian athletes, like all Canadians, came home to protect our communities, we needed our teams and our team leaders more than ever. We are all Team Canada. As our Olympic teams gather here in Tokyo, I am filled with an incredible a sense of pride. The character of our athletes has been everything we could hope for in role models. They have been advocates and ambassadors, caring for their community and their team while relentlessly believing in big goals. They gather here in Tokyo stronger and faster than ever. Our delegation of 370 with a Canadian record-breaking eight teams qualified is our biggest since 1984. Selecting our flag bearer wasn't about looking for our brightest star power. It was about reflect, reflecting the brilliance and the character of the whole team. With today's selection, we continue our history of selecting talented athletes, respected by their peers, who have tremendous potential at the, these Olympic Games. With the unprecedented hurdles presented by the pandemic, as well as the associated training and qualification cha challenges, team sports represent unity and overcoming challenges together. It was a natural choice to choose leaders of teams to be our Team Canada leaders. Our success will continue to pivot on how we work together, the voices that build bridges between us, and the leaders that guide us and remind us that we are stronger together. J'ai maintenant le grand plaisir de vous présente, présenter non pas un, mais deux leaders qui conduiront Équipe Canada comme porte-drapeau à la cérémonie d'ouverture. She is a thoughtful and respected leader, making her third straight Olympic appearance in women's basketball, and he is the co-captain of the men's rugby team who will be making his Olympic debut. Voici les porte-drapeaux d'Équipe Canada aux Jeux de Tokyo 2020. Please welcome Team Canada's flag bearers for Tokyo 2020, Miranda Aim and Nathan Hirayama. Woo! Over to you, Miranda. Hello, and thank you so much. I feel so honored to represent Team Canada and lead Team Canada in these opening ceremonies alongside Nate and to represent not only my fellow athletes of Team Canada, but also the greater Team Canada, which is our nation. This past year and a half has demanded a high level of teamwork and Canadians from coast to coast to coast stepped up and demonstrated togetherness, resilience, and solidarity. And that is why I am so proud to carry the flag for you. Je suis très fier de vous représenter, pas que mes collègues athlètes, mais aussi vous, les Canadiens, d'un nation à l'autre. Vous faites partie de l'équipe Canada, surtout après cette uh, période difficile où on a montré notre esprit de solidarité et de communauté. Je suis très, très fier. Merci beaucoup. C'est un vrai honor. Thank you. And I, I should have mentioned off the top that uh, Miranda is joining us from here in Japan and that Nathan, um, who uh, I'm about to introduce, is joining us from British Columbia. So now over to you, Nathan. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, I'll just echo what Miranda said. It's a massive honor to have been asked to do this, especially alongside someone who's uh, decorated and has had the kind of career Miranda's had. Um, very excited to get over there with my squad and, um, yeah, get into these games. Um, yeah, I know, really exciting times and just a massive honor. Uh, I'm going to give our, our manager a bit of heck. I didn't, I didn't realize I had to do it in French, so I didn't really prepare anything in French. But uh, thank you. Merci. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Nathan. No problem at all. Um, donc, félicitations and congratulations to Miranda and Nathan and all the best to you in the upcoming Olympic basketball and rugby tournaments.
And now we will take uh, some time for questions. So again, please use the raise hand feature or chat function. And when called upon, please state your name and organization and uh, to whom uh, the question is directed to. En attendant la première question, un rappel de utiliser la fonction chat ou lever le main et uh, d'identifier votre organisme en même temps. Okay, so I think our first question is uh, from Jamie Strachan. Hi guys, congratulations, uh, quite an honor. Um, just a question um, for Marnie and Miranda who are kind of both um, over here um, on the ground here in, in Tokyo. Um, obviously, um, you know, a big day internally for the Canadian team, but I'm sure you've, you know, been reading the stories here in Japan. There's a lot of um, pushback against these games. What have been your observations um, on the ground about um, how these games are being received and, and some of your thoughts on that? I'll let Miranda go first, and then I'll follow up if you'd like. All right, yes. Uh, we know that this has been a difficult journey for the um, Japanese uh, people, as well as the Tokyo 2020 um, organizing committee. Um, but we know also that we have been welcomed so heartily at, since we've been here. Um, everybody has been so gracious and wonderful. Um, I know that everything, all the precautions, all the protocols are being followed to the rule in order to keep the athletes safe as well as the Japanese people. So I really trust the, the processes that have been put in place and I feel that they've been doing a great job and will continue to do so throughout, uh, throughout the games. Yeah, Jamie, I'll, I'll, I'll just, um I'll be saying the same thing, actually. We are so grateful to the people of Tokyo. We know that it's been a very challenging year to prepare these games, um, but the experiences that our teams have had uh, out in the community, our rowing team, our softball team, they've come back with, um, and they, are, they were outside of the village, and now they, they've moved into the village. They've had nothing but um, wonderful things to say about their hosts. Um, the, the protocols, uh, you know, coming through the airport, there is, uh, it, it's slow. But those are, are critical processes, and um, I think what we have been experiencing is, is nothing but um, what, what we have been experiencing is uh, a, a generosity and an effort to make these games uh, safe and very successful. Excellent. Thank you both. Um, to Curtis Withers, please. Uh, hi, uh, Curtis Withers, Canadian Press. Uh, this question is uh, for Marnie. Um, can you uh, tell me what the uh, sort of parade of nations will look like in the opening ceremony? Who will get to march in that? And, uh, you know, will you have any sort of directives for the athletes outside of what local health uh, authorities are mandating? Well, we've already been seeing um, the protocols inside the village, uh, you know, restrictive. Um, but with respect to the opening ceremony and the Parade of Nations, we have, have left attendance um, up to the teams. And so the teams are making their own decision. Uh, one of the protocols that are unique to these games um, is that it will be athletes only uh, marching, so there there won't be any of the support staff. Sometimes we have some of the, the medical practitioners um, who get to join the athletes um, be, because, as is the case, not all of Team Canada will be in Tokyo for the opening ceremony. And again, another protocol um, dictates that, you know, athletes can't come in until uh, five days before their competition. So we have a smaller population um, who is even here and available to go into the opening ceremony. So there, there will be a presence of Team Canada. It will um, uh, look smaller than normal, uh, but it will be a concentrated group of, uh, of athletes um, and who are looking to have a good time. But at the same time, you know, the decision to go opening ceremony for every Olympic Games, it's never been about whether you'd like to go to the opening ceremony. It's whether or not it's a performance decision to go to the Games. And certainly in this pandemic, um, that has been a, an added layer to that decision making. Excellent. Thanks, Marnie. Um, Jeremy Freeborn. Right. 
Are you folks able to hear me at all? Yes. You can? Okay, terrific. I just have one quick question for each of you, Miranda and Nathan. Question for Nathan first. Uh, this will be the first time that Canada is going to be in the Olympics in men's rugby. How meaningful is it for you to be, be a part, a part of history? Oh yeah, it's extremely meaningful for, for the whole team. Um, especially after, after having uh, failed to qualify five years ago, I know with that group, it was a, uh, something we all really, really wanted to, to do and, and be at Rio, but um, yeah, having, having gone through that and, um, Put in the work over the last five years to, to get to get to Tokyo here with with this group of people is, is really special and um, something we're really excited about. Uh, yeah, we, we just can't wait to get on the airplane and get over there. Thank, thanks so much. And uh, once again, my name is Jeremy Freeborn with uh, Canada Sports Scene, Canadian Sports Scene um, And one one quick question for you, Miranda. Um, the, the last two Olympic Games. The, the, the team has got to to the quarterfinals. Now the focus is, is, is going to be probably to get to the semifinals. What is it going to take for you to get to the final four? Yeah, it's definitely been a building process for our, us. Um, we've worked long and hard to get to this uh, moment right now. Um, to have qualified for three straight Olympics is huge for us for basketball. Um, so we've been building on each of our successes and failures over the, the past 10 years, more than that now. Um, but uh, yeah, for us, we're not trying to look too far into the future because um, basketball is one game by game, like any sport. Um, our first mission is our first game versus Serbia on the 26th. Um, and then we will tackle each challenge as it comes. Um, that's the important thing for us to stay focused and dialed in um, because we can't project too far into the future. So we're gonna take care of those small details that we need to take care of, um, do all the homework that we need to do on our opponents and uh, show up and play. Thanks, thanks so much and best of luck to uh, both of you. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, over to Wes Gilbertson. Thanks. Uh, congratulations, Miranda and Nathan. If you wouldn't mind uh, just both answering this, I'm curious uh, with Team Canada having never had team sport athletes uh, lead the team into the opening ceremonies before, this probably wasn't necessarily on your radar. I'm just curious about that initial reaction when you, you know, get the news that uh, Team Canada would like to have you lead them into the opening ceremonies. What kind of goes through your mind? What's the reaction in that moment? Go for it, Miranda. Yeah, I'll go first. Um, uh, in a word, shock. I, I was definitely very surprised and I, I chatted with Nate via WhatsApp and I, I believe his sentiments were similar. Um, we definitely recognize that um, team sports are, are usually not selected for this role. And, and like Marnie mentioned, uh, I think it's a perfect opportunity and, and it's a beautiful image uh, of what we've uh, gone through this past year and a half. Team sport is, is a whole different beast. Um, there's so many things going on for sure, the high uh, performance component, but as well, the working together as a team, uh, dealing with all sorts of different undercurrents and context and, and personalities. Um, and I think that's what we all recognize on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you're at home or in the business world or wherever you are, we all deal with that. So I think that reflects um, the, the general population of Canada. And I think it, it's a really beautiful image. No, my, uh, my reactions were, yeah, like, like Miranda said, it was, it was definitely shock. And yeah, we were, we were expressing that to each other via WhatsApp the other day. Um, for this thing from, from my mind when Marnie asked to chat. So, um, yeah, definitely, um, very surprised, but uh, just uh, I think my biggest reaction is just very honored. Excellent. Thank you. And thanks, Wes. Um, Rosie Domeno. Hi, and congratulations uh, to both of you. And I would also like to ask both of you a similar question to what was asked earlier, but more 
personal, I suppose. Um, entering the stadium in the opening ceremonies, how weird is that going to be without a crowd there, without fans there? I think there will always be officials and, you know, your friendly reporters in the stands. So, um, Miranda, you've been through, I guess, the experience before, and Nathan, it will be a first for you. Um, just how, how strange do you anticipate that will be? Well, I guess it is with, uh, I think Miranda would. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Why don't we go with Nathan um, first this time? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it will be. It will be um, a different. A different opening ceremonies, um, especially for those who've been to prior um, games, like Miranda and, and some of her teammates. Um, but I still think it's going to be such a special event, um, signifying the you know the beginning of something that's um, you know been in doubt over the last, uh, you know, 16 or last year or so. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just going to be a really special occasion for all the athletes just to signify the beginning of, of this, uh, amazing, amazing event. So, uh, I think it's going to just be like a really exciting time. Thank you. Nate said it beautifully. Uh, yeah, Nate said it beautifully. I can't add a, a lot other than, um, most athletes, or my, my, I'll speak for myself, um, we have been kind of operating under these conditions for a little while, training in bubbles, um, in empty stadiums. Um, so we are familiar with this context already. Of course, uh, um, the opening ceremony is going to look different, but like Nate said, I think it's still gonna be a wonderful experience. I'm sure they're going to be, they're going to do a great job with the presentation and it's gonna be a, an exciting games. Excellent, thank you, and thanks, Rosie. Um, over to Stephen D'Souza. Hi, guys. Uh, congratulations to both of you. Uh, for Miranda and Nathan, being of both of you of being diverse backgrounds, have you thought about uh, the role you'll play as role models for kids across Canada as they watch you uh, walk into the stadium on Friday? Has that, has that crossed your mind among the many things you guys are, are thinking about heading into the games? And uh, I'll assign Miranda, you can go first. I swung my mouse around a little bit too hard there. Um, yes, definitely. I think as soon as you become a professional athlete and you represent Canada on a stage, you, you know you immediately that you have become a role model to, to young and old alike. Um, so that's constantly something that's on my mind. And I, and I do recognize also that representation matters. So if someone is looking up to me and, and feels like their dreams are more attainable because of myself or Nate or any of my teammates out there, I think that is just a, a net win for sure. I think it's going to be incredible. So very, very honored to, to walk beside Nate for, for this. And I, I feel the exact same way. No, I, I, it's uh, something that's not taken lightly. It's a, it's a massive honor. And um, yeah, I think like Miranda said, I think all the athletes here understand that, um, you know, we have a responsibility um, as role models. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's, I don't think it's something anyone takes lightly. Thank you very much. Excellent, thank you. Um, Grace Lee. Hi, congratulations to our two flag bearers. Um, this is Grace Lee from CTV News. My question is for the two of you. Uh, there are already positive COVID cases in the athletes village, which was billed to be the safest place in Tokyo. We're just wondering as athletes, as Canadian athletes, do you feel safe going there right now? Yeah, I think um, as Canadian athletes, I think um, I think we just trust the the protocols set in place. Um, I think for most of the most of the teams heading to Tokyo, um, these protocols probably aren't something that's too new to them. I know with with our team, we we do COVID check ins and protocols, and uh, it's just something we've been living for the last um, year or so. So. Um, I don't think it's um, a foreign feeling going into the games, although it'll be different. Um, I, I do think, you know, we trust the protocols here and I, I, I trust that, um, 
the protocols at the athletes village and in, in Tokyo will be, will be the same. Yes. To echo those sentiments, I think the, the IOC and everyone involved has, has, um, set out some great um, guidelines and protocols and the COC as well has gone above and beyond those protocols. So we also have our, our own guidelines that we are following above and beyond those that have been set in place. So I feel uh, very safe and um, know that we're going into um, a, a good environment and, and trusting that those are, uh, will take care of us. Thank you. Sorry, can we ask the same question to Marnie as well? Yeah, thank you, Grace. Um, I'm so proud of these two athletes. Uh, neither one of them are in the village, and uh, they they haven't arrived like in our hub yet. And yet, they already intuitively know that the protocols and and those positive tests in the village that you referred to um, are showing that the system is working. People are getting tested daily, and that allows all the different uh, national sports organizations to respond instantly and to quarantine and isolate until uh, like we determine what's going on. So like the two of them both said, it's a, a operation and a system that they've been working in for uh, about over a year. And uh, they're familiar with it as are like all the athletes that are coming into the village. It's like, it's pretty common to see people like spitting into a little test tube and just throw Everyone's got a mask on. People are running and, and um, exercising in a socially distanced way. And, but, you know, exercising, it's almost 40 degrees out there and, and, and people have masks on their face. Uh, and, and the system is, is set up um, and the testing is, is set up to make sure that uh, uh, any, any issues get flagged and dealt with immediately. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you, Grace. Um, over to uh, Eduardo Harari. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Eduardo Harari from La Portada, Canada and Spanglish Sports World uh, here in, in Toronto. Uh, my question is for both, both of the athletes, uh, especially Miranda, the, the first one was to you with regards to the training, the training that you guys have been doing in Kiraya, uh, how that has been. And how do, does the aspect of not having fans in the stands during the, the games, will that create a little bit of a favorable atmosphere for you guys uh, when you play the big teams as well? And for Nathan, being the first time that you guys are going to represent Canada uh, in uh, rugby, rugby is a, a sport that has been grabbing a lot of attention as of late. And how does that that aspect uh, favor Canada going into the tournament? Miranda, do you want to go first? Sure, I will. Um, our reception by Korea City was incredible. Both the um, Korea City Sports as well as our hotel, they were were just like we were overwhelmed by their generosity and their enthusiasm for us being there. Uh, we had many, many gifts exchanged safely between us. Um, and we, we felt really blessed to be able to even have the opportunity to come here um, a couple weeks in advance to be able to um, get adjusted um, to the time change for sure, which knocks you out, but as well just getting used to the heat and humidity as well, even though we are an indoor sport. But um, that has been incredible for us and I think will we'll be a competitive advantage as well. Um, and your second question was about spectators. Um, like I said, most of us are playing pro uh, overseas or have been playing in the American school system uh, as well as the Canadian school system. So um, we are used to having no fans in the stands because that has been the norm for this past year. Um, and you did mention that there is a favorable aspect to that. We can actually hear the plays being called. Uh, we can hear our, our teammates talking to us. Uh, and then you also don't have jeering fans on the other side uh, trying to throw you off your game. So there's, there's always pros and cons to anything. So we are definitely going to be focusing on the pros. Excellent. And over to Nathan. Yeah, I think... Um, 
just your question about kind of rugby kind of gaining some some momentum going into these games and yeah it's been it's been a really cool really cool time for for rugby in this country um obviously not one of the the major uh high profile sports but um just just the amount it's grown um within within canada in the last you know five to six years has been has been super super cool to see um and going into a place like like japan to compete where rugby's just uh, on the rise and you know they have such a competitive uh, league over there and following um no it's it's something that's going to be you know really exciting and i think it's really exciting for all the athletes in rugby going there to compete and um yeah no i think as uh for our team it's just um you know a real honor and, and something we're really pumped about excellent thank you nathan and thanks for the question, Eduardo. Okay, so we'll do, um, we're at time, but we have two more questions in the queue. So, so we'll do uh, first Jamie again, and then over to Rosie, and, and uh, we'll call it there. So, uh, Jamie? You know what? I think I think it was supposed to be Devin, Devin Haru from CBC. It's good to see all of you. Uh, I have a question for each one of you, Nathan. Uh, first, for you, uh, it, it strikes me that your dad, Gary, also played for the national team. You're the first father-son duo ever to play on the national team. What was that phone like with your dad, Gary, to tell him you were carrying the flag? Oh, it was really cool calling uh, him and my mom. Um, to tell them that, the, that I that I was uh, selected for this, I think uh, their reactions were similar to mine, kind of very surprised and shocked, but al also very supportive. And um, yeah, hopefully it's something that you know they're proud of. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be just a special time for for um, my whole family. Uh, Miranda, for you, Canada's first twenty one opening ceremony flag bearers were men. You talked about representation. What message do you have to young women across the country who are going to see you carrying the flag into the games? Oh, well, that's a great question. Um, especially since uh, Canada basketball has been promote, promoting a mad love campaign, we call it, and talking about this exact uh, topic and just embracing everything that makes you who you are, specifically young female athletes. Um, you know, we're tall, we're strong, we're fast. We have an aggressive side sometimes, and, and that is our strength. Whatever our, your strength is, um, play that up to the best of your ability. Uh, don't compare yourself to others, stay in your lane and uh, continue to, to follow your dreams. I think that would be my word of advice to any young female ballers or athletes out there. Beautiful. And, and finally, Marnie, uh, I know Kathleen has been on your mind. In 1996, you and her had the, the pleasure of carrying the flag for Canada. What recollections do you have of that? Thanks for the tears, Devin. Um, you know, I, it, it is actually uh, a, gr a great question because Kathleen and I carried it together. And so in selecting two people to carry this flag, the flags, um, I, I have to admit, I don't know if they'll be carrying their own flags or if they're sharing a flag. I don't know how that's going to work. Um, there's a, a meeting on the protocol for that tomorrow. But I remember that Kathleen and I um, weren't isolated. You know, we, we had a wingman with us as, as we walked through that. And I'm really happy for Miranda and, and, and Nathan that then when they go through and they'll be sharing this, they, they will be increasing the oral history of that moment for them. And they will be able to always share about the little details which lead to the other little details, which um, they, just always snowballs and makes it bigger. So for sure, I'm thinking a lot about Kathleen these days. And the, the opening ceremony tomorrow, uh, the, the opening ceremony coming up um, definitely reminds me of, of the closing ceremony that we had 25 years ago. Thank you for that, Marnie. And, and again, congratulations to, to the both of you, Nathan and Miranda. Thanks, Devin, and, and apologies for that. We got our names crossed over here. Um, okay, uh, Rosie, last question, over to you. Um, a question for Marnie. Hi, Marnie. Nice to see you again. Um, yeah. Reporters aren't we go into the athletes' village this time as as we always have before. So, 
can you just maybe give some insight about what it's like, what's going on there? You mentioned there's a lot of spitting going on. Uh, that's become a, a, a common uh, site. But um, what are the athletes doing because they have to be physically distanced? What kind of social life can they have? What's it like? Well, um, I was actually talking with, with somebody about this today. Is, is it... I have explored this village more than I've ever explored any other village. Um, Olympic villages are a very special place. They always have been, and there's always these unique little corners. But often the athletes kind of took off to explore um, the host city or go shopping or to go to a mall or, you know, get, get some ice cream just, just to do something. And the really interesting thing that we're seeing at, in this village or that I'm seeing so far is that people are really exploring the little corners. And um, if I can get through this without, there, there is like uh, a remembrance tree, which I found. And there's all these different little displays um, that you, I'm taking the time to go up and, and read and look. And every, everyone is having the same experience. The people I've talked to have multi-game experience. There's like, yeah, you know, I, I don't remember walking around a village like this. Um, you know, the in the cafeteria, I, probably the biggest and the oddest thing because, you know, everyone's had a year where we're used to wearing masks, but in the cafeteria, not only is there a divider, um, sorry about the microphone, but not only is there a divider that goes uh, uh, along in front of her face, but there's one in, in each cubicle. So you kind of feel like you're, you're sitting in a, in a glass <laughs> box eating your meal, but it's the one time you get to take your mask off. So everyone's really happy to be there because you can see faces, but then you're kind of like, you, you almost need like a dry erase marker or it's, it's like, you, you know, make your call to the person on the other side. Um, but uh, so, so that's kind of been a little bit interesting. But the cafeteria looks exactly the same. Like I know exactly how to uh, work my way around there because it's like nine of the other ones I've been to. The food is excellent, by the way. It's awesome food from around the world. And as always, the, the recycling is hardcore. Um, the other thing uh, I'll say about socializing is it's going to be really different these games because a lot of socializing actually takes place after an athlete is finished. Um, so athletes are coming in and by definition at these games, they're five days away from their competition. Uh, so they're very focused on what, what is almost always a very important workouts, final prep workouts that they're that going through their process. So while they walk around a little bit in the evening, there's a lot of people going on and um, they're really focused on the rest, the recovery, and, and they've got those pre-games jitters. Uh, and then there won't be that type of like hangout, like socializing after because the IOC rules are uh, departure um, 48 hours after. And, and as Miranda mentions, we have a higher level and the COC is, is targeting more of a 24 hour departure. Um, is, it's just easier for everyone. You know, how do you not celebrate? So we're like, go home and, and, and uh, you know, if you're double vaxxed, you'll be celebrating with your family very quickly. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Marnie. And congratulations once again, uh, Miranda and Nathan. This is uh, super exciting. And um, thank you to everyone who joined us tonight. Merci à tout le monde. Um, and that is it. We are closing. So for those of you in Tokyo, have a good night. And for those of you back home, have an excellent day. Thank you. Bye.